Welcome uh, to week five's third lecture. So let's figure out what would be the demand for insurance uh, depending upon whether the consumer is risk averse, risk lover, or risk neutral. Uh, they will have different demands for insurance. So let's figure out the case of risk aversion. Suppose a consumer is risk averse. How much would he like to uh, insure against uh, uh, an accident? Right. We are taking the example of an accident. Let's assume that the industry uh, of insurance uh, is competitive. Uh, when we say it's a competitive industry, it means that entry to the insurance industry is free. Which also means that uh, in the long run, the expected economic profits are going to be zero. So you should remember this from your principles classes. Uh, in a perfectly compa uh, competitive industry, long-run profits are zero. Long-run economic profits are zero. That doesn't mean that the accounting profits are zero. But here, expected economic profit would be zero if the insurance industry is competitive. So what does that mean? It means that if you look at the profit uh, if you look at the profit equation then you would basically equate that uh, to zero and figure out how much is the level of insurance that uh, uh, that would be demanded so gamma is the price of the insurance of a dollar k is the total insurance that is bought right? minus uh, K would be the insurance that is going to be used with the probability of the accident and with the probability of no accident, uh, no amount is, go uh, is going to be used. So this is the revenue of the firm selling uh, competitive insurance, the total insurance that the consumer bought and the price at which the insurance was sold to him or her. This is the payout in case there is an accident. And this is the payout in case there is no accident. Right? So notice how we have written the profit function. The profit function itself is conditional. Right? Conditional on accident happening uh, and uh, no accident happening. So uh, as consumption is state contingent, profits are also state contingent. Now, given that economic profits are going to be zero, uh, let's equate that to zero. Now, because this payout is zero, this particular bracket or this particular term is going to drop out. So all that we have here is gamma minus pi a multiplied by k is going to be zero. So you guessed it right. Uh, k, uh, if you multiply, if we divide both the sides by k, uh, the right side remains zero. So free entry uh, would uh, basically uh, imply that the price of a dollar of insurance is uh, going to be equal to the probability that the accident would happen. So if the insurance industry is comparative in equilibrium, the price of a dollar insurance would be equated to the probability of an accident happening. we call this insurance as fair. So uh, if price of a dollar insurance is equal to the accident probability, then the insurance is called fair. If it is not equal to the accident probability, then we will call insurance unfair. So when insurance is fair, rational insurance choices must satisfy uh, this, uh, this condition here. Right? So this is the price of, uh, this is the slope of the budget constraint. This is the slope of uh, the indifference curve. Now, because we figured out uh, in a comparative industry, the price of insurance should be equal to the accident probability, we can substitute for gamma here, saying that pi a divided by one minus pi a is gonna be equal to this. But then what remains actually here? Pi a pi a gets canceled. One minus pi a is nothing but pi n a. Therefore that also gets canceled. Which means that if the insurance is fair, 
then the rational insurance uh, that is bought should satisfy this condition here that marginal utility from consumption change in consumption in the accident state should be equal to the marginal utility from change in consumption in the non-accident state so what we are basically saying is that a dollar spent on uh, changing uh, the equation uh, changing the consumption should yield the same marginal utility or in other words marginal utility of an extra dollar of income if the loss occurs should be equal to the marginal utility of an extra dollar of income if the loss doesn't matter or doesn't occur so that's typically kind of an equilibrium condition uh, that we get now clearly uh, if the consumer uh, uh, is risk averse, what is definitely uh, going to happen under this condition? So a risk averse consumer is going to satisfy this condition in order to buy insurance. Of course, if he is risk averse, then his utility function is concave and uh, his marginal utility of money is declining as the amount of money he has increases. So uh, if for example consumption in accident state is greater than consumption in non-accident state, then the marginal utility from consumption in accident state is going to be greater uh, than consumption in non-accident state and vice versa. Furthermore, if the marginal utilities are of income are equal at uh, at both of these consumptions then obviously it means that uh, consumption in the accident state should be equal to consumption in the non-accident state what does this imply for insurance it implies that the consumer would fully insure So a risk-averse consumer, in a, if the, if the uh, insurance industry is competitive, will fully insure so that consumption in the accident state is equal to the consumption in non-accident state. To sum up, if the consumer is risk-averse, expected utility maximizer and if he is offered fair insurance against the loss, then he will optimally choose to fully insure. This statement optimally choose is important because he's satisfying this optimization condition here. Now, think about a case where insurance is unfair. The consumer is not offered uh, insurance at the fair price. Then what would be the case? Well, if the insurance is un, uh, unfair, it basically means that in the long run, insurance expect insurers make expect to make economic profit. So this whole term here, which is the state contingent profit that we looked at before, uh, is going to be greater than zero, which implies that gamma uh, is going to be greater than accident probability which means that this ratio here, which is the ratio of uh, the budget constraint is going to be greater than the ratio of probabilities of accident divided by uh, no accident. But rational choice requires this condition here. So how are we going to uh, satisfy this when we know that gamma divided by 1 minus gamma is greater than this. If this is the situation here, and if this is the condition that needs to be satisfied, then the only way that can be satisfied is if marginal utility from consumption in a non-accident state is greater than the marginal utility of consumption in a non-accident state, which, if is a risk-averse person, implies that the level of consumption in the accident state 
should be lower than the level of consumption in the non-accident state. What does this imply for the level of insurance? Given an, given an unfair insurance, a risk averter would always optimally choose to buy insurance less than full unfair insurance. Right? So here you can basically see how the choice of consumption smoothing depends upon what is the price uh, that the consumer faces for insuring uh, against shocks to his consumption. And that depends upon uh, whether the insurance industry is competitive or not. We know that uncertainty is pervasive. So this is not only about consumption uh, smoothing in case of accident or non-accident. We have uh, uncertainty in terms of health. We have uncertainty in terms of life and so on. So how, what are the rational responses to uncertainty? Well, one which we just looked at right now is buying insurance. The second is basically buying a portfolio of contingent consumption goods. Now, what does that really mean? So think of this in a possibility as uh, uh, of buying two stocks. Stocks are contingent commodities. So let's say there are two firms, A and B, their share cost, the shares cost $10. With probability half, A's profit is going to be 100 and B's profit is going to be 20. And with probability half, the situation is going to be reverse. You have $100 to invest. How are you going to invest? If you buy only firms A, from A's stock, then with $100, you can buy 10 shares. You earn 1,000, but what, are the, what is the gamble that you're looking at here? You earn $1,000 with probability half and only $200 with probability half. So the expected earning is going to be uh, $500 plus $100, which is uh, $600. What happens if you buy a firm's P stock? $100, again, you, the total amount of shares that you're going to buy is 10 shares. The same gamble is there. Uh, the expected earning in that case is again going to be the same, $600. Now, what if you buy five shares in each firm? Then you can definitely get $600, but the risk is significantly lowered because uh, you basically have one share which doesn't go down if the other share goes down. And so overall, your risk is evened out, but you still get uh, $600. That is the benefit of diversification. So typically, diversification lowers expected earnings in exchange for lower risk, lowered risk. And that is another way of insuring against consumption. You could do that uh, with mutual insurance. You can collect people together. Let's say there are 100 risk neutral persons. Each independently uh, risk a 10,000 loss. The probability of this loss is, let's say, 1%. Let's start with initial wealth of $40,000 for everybody. If there is no insurance, this is the expected wealth. You, are, uh, you would still have $39,900. Let's say that there is a uh, mutual insurance. Let's say that the expected loss is $100, which is given to you. Each of the 100 persons pay $1 into a mutual insurance fund. Then the mutual insurance, uh, what is the expected wealth under this? The expected wealth under mutual insurance is 39,999, which is certainly greater than 39,900. So when you spread risk like this, everybody benefits. So this is a very simple example of how uh, insuring can help you lower, mutual insuring can help you lower the uh, risk, keeping the same expected returns or getting more. All right, let's stop here. Uh, go ahead and do the uh, third quiz and then uh, attempt the homework.